and Happy does not like to trailer load when he's by himself. So when he's gone places in the past, typically another horse goes on the trailer first and then he goes with them. He's a beautiful thoroughbred gelding that does a lot of lovely dressage things and eventing things. And we're gonna help him with trailer loading by himself today. This is my first time ever working with him. And you're gonna see before I even get to the trailer, I'm gonna do his ABCs first. So that way we have some understanding, some trust and some respect before we even get there. So we have a language to work with. So let's take a look. Here's a little look at some of the ABCs with Happy. So here I'm asking him to move his hip around and you can see he's a little bit reluctant, not really sure what I'm asking him to do, but he's giving me some nice cross steps in his hind end. So when I'm first working with the horses doing their ABCs, I'm just trying to get some understanding and trying to help them figure out all the different buttons that we can do together and show them that we have a bit of a language together. So doing things like showing them when I don't want them to react, like there I'm rubbing him with the stick, versus when I was doing things where I'm asking him to move, like when I was asking him to move his hip that you saw just a little bit ago. So here you can see he's a little bit uh, worried about the stick, he's moving away from it, not entirely sure. So I just want to make sure I take any of that brace out of the horse before I even go to something like the trailer, because if he's not even relaxed with my tools and my stick, then he's not going to be relaxed when I go to trailer load. So here's a little look at moving his shoulders around. So I'm moving him around with some touch. So there's two different ways that we can move a horse. We can move them with touch, we can move them with rhythm. So I'm just playing around, trying to show him that we can have a bit of a partnership, that we can understand each other. And then that way when we get to the trailer, he's gonna be able to understand what it is that I'm asking him to do. And he's gonna expect that I'm gonna be fair and reasonable and persistent until I get what it is that I'm after. So here I'm moving his shoulder around again. So you can see I'm trying to be really clear about what I'm doing and then he's getting a cookie sometimes for things that he's doing well. And that's because I want to encourage him to try. And here's a little look at sideways and I'm just asking him to do a few steps because I want him to get an idea of what he's doing and then give him lots of rewards. There I'm giving him lots of rubs. Here's a little look at asking him to go forwards. And this is a really important one for trailer loading because I need him to go forward without me and let me be sort of behind his drive line a little bit. And he needs to be able to understand what that stick means when I twirl it behind his back there, when I'm using rhythm behind him to send him forward. He needs to understand that. So when he's moving forward, I'm leaving him alone. And I'm just trying to do enough to make sure that we've got some understanding. And then now I'm asking him to do a change of direction. So you can see I backed up to draw him in towards me, did a little turn in my body, used a little bit of rhythm from the stick, and I'm getting him to go the other way. So I wanna make sure I have really clear understanding with all of this before I get to the trailer at all. And once we look like we've got those things understood, then we can head to the trailer. So this is the first attempt at trailer loading. And here we go, point him, allow him to sniff the trailer, just keep his nose centered and straight, and allow the horse to offer to go in. So that was a bit of a surprise that he just walked straight on. Um, so we weren't really expecting that. Normally he doesn't sort of load, but either way, he ended up walking right on the trailer. So then now what I'm doing is allowing him the ability to stand there. If he needed to shoot back because he was anxious, he would be allowed to shoot back. So I'm just rubbing him a little bit there. I want to make sure that he's fully in the trailer mentally and emotionally, not just physically before I do the butt bar that you can see I just grabbed there. And so I'm just grabbing the butt bar, putting that across, giving him another friendly rub and then I'm releasing it back down. So I don't want him to feel panicked and trapped. Sometimes what people do is they load a horse onto a trailer, and then as soon as the horse is on, they quickly shut the door, and that creates a panic sensation and doesn't encourage the horse to want to trailer load. So instead, he's free to back up if he wants to, he's not trapped. Also, we set the trailer up to make sure it was clean, open, and inviting. Okay, so this is horse number two because Happy kind of just walked down the trailer for you guys, which wasn't really maybe what you were wanting to see how we overcome. But what I liked about that is it showed how just doing a little bit of groundwork, teaching the ABCs, builds trust with the horse so they can just walk onto the trailer. This is Baymax. He's a $200 rescue off of Craigslist. He really lucked out because now he's owned by Edelweiss Farm and he just does pleasure things. He's a lovely guy, so we're just going to teach him his ABCs and then we're going to see how he does on the trailer.
here's a little look at doing the ABCs with Baymax. So this is a horse that typically doesn't really do any groundwork. He just sort of trail rides a little bit. So I had to spend a little bit more time with him just helping him understand just because he really wasn't sure of what the groundwork was. So I'm just moving his shoulders around a little bit. Here's a little bit of backup. Just trying to help him understand that if he tries, he gets rewarded. And here you can see I'm teaching him how to go forwards, and he's really got no idea what I'm doing. So I'm having to put a little bit of pressure on the lead rope, really trying to help him understand what I want him to do. He's a little bit worried about what I'm doing with the stick there, but I'm being careful not to hit him with it or anything like that. Just trying to show him that it's a tool of communication, and then rewarding him for when he's going out and trying and getting an idea. But you can see he's really focused on me, really interested in what we're doing, and trying really hard to do the right thing for me. So after I worked on that a little bit, here's a little look afterwards. So I can point in the direction of travel. He's understanding to move forward. He's moving forward nice and freely, understanding that that's what that meant. So it's looking a lot better than what it was before. So I just need to get some understanding. And then we're going to head to the trailer. Okay, so we've set the trailer up. It's got a hay net bag in there that yeah, has a couple carrots stuffed in it as well because I'm a firm believer of once the horse gets on the trailer, it should be a happy, wonderful place. And Baymix decides to just walk onto the trailer, which is not exactly what we were hoping he would do for you, but um, nonetheless, we set it up for success and many ways doing the ABCs, making sure the trailer was clean, inviting, had nice shavings down on it that smelt similar to what's in his stall. There's a hay bag in there, there's a couple carrots in there, so he's getting to have a nice treat while he's in there. And uh, the trailer itself is nice and wide and bright and inviting. It's got windows, so it's not as scary as if you've got a trailer that maybe is a bit tighter space. It's really important that you get a trailer that's inviting and appropriate for the size of the horse that you have. So I ended up letting him back off the trailer after he was in for a little while and decide I'll see how he goes again. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing where I point him out and then I'm going to offer the trailer to him, point his nose in the right direction and give him the cue to walk on and he goes right on the trailer again. So I didn't really get a chance to show you what to do if um, the horse oh sort of stops or I'm box a little bit. Right now, so like what I'm going to do trailer. next is take out Khaleesi for you so that way you can see a horse load on the trailer that does sort of startle a little bit. So after I've sent him on and I know that he's standing there, then I'm bringing the butt bar up to see how he is. Again, if he had the need to back off, then I would allow him to back off and then I would address the situation by just directing him back towards the trailer. So I never want the horse to feel like if they get on this box, they're going to be trapped. I want them willing and ready to stand there. And then I would be able to close up the trailer. So once I've undone the butt bar and I rubbed him a little bit, then I'm going to give him a cue to back off, which is just gentle feel on the line. And you'll notice I'm doing all of this from outside of the trailer. So I'm standing at the back of the trailer and sending the horse in without me. It's the safest position for me because once he goes on, if he startles or does something I'm not going to be stuck in a box and potentially hurt myself and also leaving an escape door open can sometimes be scary for the horse because they might actually try to go out that escape door so this is sort of the safest way to do it the horse goes in without you I'm not trapped in a box with them and the horse isn't trying to go out an escape door and I'm just allowing him to take his time as he goes off the ramp there and just letting him do what he needs to do so that's trailer loading with a difficult horse. <laughs> but what, what about... Okay, let's try another horse. Well, okay. okay, so here's a little look at Khaleesi. So I pulled her out of the paddock, didn't do any groundwork this time, so that way she might actually stop and startle for you. So here she does stop. So all I do is make sure her nose stays focused on the trailer. If she tries to look left or right away from the trailer, like escape, then I'll just redirect her nose and say, no, no, no look this way. But I'm not forcing her in the trailer. So when she backs up like that, I just, I can uh, just retry so I can do a circle or I could have asked her to go forward again. So this is a little bit of retreat and reapproach. So then I'm going to keep her nose pointed centered at the trailer. And if she stops, I'm not going to force her in the trailer. I allow her to stop. I allow her to look, but I keep her nose pointed at the trailer so that way she's encouraged to try. So as long as she's sort of sniffing around or she's investigating the trailer, then I leave her alone. 
but if she starts to exit seek or something I would block her and if she had offered to go forward into the trailer then I could allow her to do that as well so I've retreated again and then this time she decided it was okay and up and in she goes so she's obviously trailer loaded before I just sort of pulled her out of the paddock without having done any groundwork but I wanted to sort of show you what to do if the horse stops and that's how I address the situation I basically let them stay facing the trailer or I sorry cause them to stay facing the trailer as long as they're trying I leave them alone and that's the biggest piece I think with trailer loading is that if the horse is trying don't you don't need to ask them to try they're already trying so if they're sniffing the trailer just allow them to do that and when they're ready they can go in so when she backs off I send her in a little circle and I'm just going to show her loading one more time and if I wanted to I could send her in trot circles there and then that way when she actually goes into the trailer it would be even more relaxing so good luck with your trailer loading guys I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you next week